And David Beckham's son is called after him. Come on, Brooklyn, you're on two on two. It's Bamba Gascoigne. He's sent a brain on leaps. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is Bristol. That's Brooklyn. Okay, here's the next one. This is a hard one. I'll have to give you a clue on this one. And I've written it on the back. All right, I'll tell you what. Guess the country it's in. Begins with F. Um, France. This man, this man, listen, you, you get your money out, get him an ice cream. Now look, all I'm doing, folks, I'm here to try and make you think. Look, let me try and make you think. Look, let's say I said to you, tell me what a rainbow looks like. Okay, you just describe to me what a rainbow looks like. Uh, it's got seven colours. It's got seven colours. Is she right or wrong? Is she right? I say to the lady, what's the rainbow look like? And she says it's got seven colours. Is that correct or wrong? Correct. correct. Now I say this. I'm blind. Totally blind. And I say, what's the rainbow look like? And you give your answer again. Um. Seven colours. <laughs> yeah. Now you're right. But why can't I get it? Because I've got the problem. See what I mean? So if I've got the problem, you're not wrong, I just can't see it. Do you know why loads of people aren't Christians? Just can't see it. Just can't see it. Here we go, look. Can you recognise the bridge? Here's the next one. He's getting excited. He's getting sad. Here you go. That one there. I'm not going to take, but it's in Australia. Sydney. Sydney is correct. <laughs> <laughs> look, ladies and gentlemen, look, that's in Bristol, that's in New York, that one is in France, and that one is in Sydney. If you look carefully, there's the Opera House. Now look, do you remember when this happened? Can you remember when that happened? That was the ship that set off, and it tipped over, because some idiot left the back door open. <laughs> That's what happened. It's true. It went about a mile into the sea, and the fellow was having a cup of tea when he should have done his job, and everything tipped over. And that was it. That ship there. Now, we'll tell you something very interesting about this ship, right? These are all different bridges, but a few years ago, this ship, it set off with people on and cargoes, and it went like this. So, what happened was, this man turned up and the Queen gave him a medal and his name's Andrew Parker now do you know why that man was a hero I'll tell you when the ship tilted because he was nearly seven foot tall he put his body across the door that was facing into the water and 22 people went across him to safety he's called Andrew Parker and he got a medal from the Queen that's him now see these bridges, they'll take you this way. Ready? They take you that way. But you know there's a bridge from here that way. It's the bridge where Jesus died on the cross. And on the cross of Calvary, Jesus was a bridge to heaven. How do you get to heaven from St. Ives? Answer, go via the cross. And it's not that way, it's this way. You see, when you're a Christian, you've got eternal hope. You know you've got eternal life. And it's not because we're good, it's because we've been let off. And that's why Jesus ever came. And that's why on the cross it went dark. And Jesus shouted, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Think of the worst thing you've ever done. I don't want you to tell me. I daren't tell you mine, because if I did, you'd say, what are you doing up here, mate? But the worst thing you've ever done, you know you've done it because you were there when it happened. The blood of Jesus, God's son, can wash you whiter than snow. Help but think of a man called Joe Biden. Now, what do we know about Joe Biden? Yesterday, he stepped down from being president. Didn't he? Did he decide, I've had enough, I'm going to step down. Do you think that was the right decision, yes or no? Raise your hand if you think Joe Biden should have stepped down as president. Put your hand up now. Okay, put your hand up if you think it was a bad decision. You think it was a bad decision?
you're a fan of Sleepy Joe, are you okay? No, you just, you, you're like, you're just been a bit controversial tonight, I was yeah. If you have it, also be you're a Trump supporter, are you? Where's your red hat, sir? <laughs> Make America great again. Now I'm on your side as well, my friend. Now we're talking about America's leaders, okay? What about over here? Are you happy we've got a new prime minister, Keir Starmer? What do you think? What goes to your mind when I say the name Keir Starmer? Is he a good prime minister? Do you think he's better than Rishi Sunak? Are you pleased with that? Do you know something I find very, very interested? In 2024, we've never had a time that's harder to be a leader. It's really tough to be a leader these days, isn't it? We've got people wanting to be cancelled, we've got people making a mess of things. It's tough, isn't it, to be a leader? And we look at these people, we look at Rishi, we look at Keir Starmer, we look at Joe Biden, and we say, where is a leader I can trust? Did you know, my dear friend, the reason we're out here tonight is because there is a leader you can trust, the Lord Jesus Christ. And nod your head in a sarcastic way, my friend, but have you told lies before? I'm sure you have. I wouldn't be a good leader, but Jesus would. Jesus never told lies. Jesus was never proud. Jesus never lusted. He was an innocent, pure man. He's the leader. Do you know Jesus Christ is coming back one day? Now, while we're just on the, the view of politics here, as you might be able to notice, I've got some prisons behind me, okay? Some very famous prisons. Now, do you think that the, the prisoners today do you think they get long enough in jail? What do you think? Yes or no? They don't do they really. They get a they get a PlayStation, they get a slap on the wrist because they murdered ten people. Isn't it? So let's have a go here now, okay? I want to see if we can recognize any of these famous prisoners. Now, I do need a bit of interaction from you, so just finish this famous uh, children's song. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. So if you're happy tonight, we're all gonna try and do a round of applause. When anyone gets it right. We're going to clap our hands. Are you ready for it? Three, two, one. Good. Okay, right, we're all happy now. We've got a bit of weight. Right, number one. What is prison number one? Can anybody name for me prison number one? My school. Your school, sir? <laughs> Can anybody name prison number one? I'll tell you what, Al Capone went there. Great white sharks in the water. Birdman went there. Does anyone know it? Alcatraz. This lady's right. Give her a round of applause. Okay, a little bit easier. Number two, in our country, all the poppies are there. Can anybody name number two? Do you recognise prison number two? It's the Tower of London. Give me a round of applause. Thank you. Okay, right, number three. Do you remember that? Right, this is near where I'm from, near Manchester. All the prisoners broke out onto the roof. Do you know what it is? Strange ways. Give this man a round of applause. Now, I was once doing this talk in Liverpool and a man came up to me and said, uh, that's Jimmy, that's Kevin, that, I was in there, I know them all, you know, so. Okay, number four, this one's really hard. I don't know if anyone is, I don't think anyone is, can you get this right? I'm asking you, do you recognise any of these famous prisons? Do you recognise number four? In Northern Ireland. If you're a naughty boy, you go there in Northern Ireland. Anyone know it? The Maze Prisons, the Maze Prisons, that's where the terrorists went, right. You're not doing very well here, I'm telling you, up north, everyone gets all of these, maybe there's more prisoners up there. But number five, this is really hard now, I'll be amazed if anyone gets this one. Number five is in South Africa, it's where Nelson Mandela went, can anybody name it for me? Robin Island, you're right, give him a round of applause. Hey, that's my You've been quiet all along and you must have known them. Okay, so I've asked you, do you recognise these famous prisons? But where am I going with this? Do you recognise the prison that lives within us all? We all carry chains, don't we? Don't we? Some of us carry the chains of addiction, we just can't put the bottle down. Some of us, we carry the chains of a broken heart. Maybe there's someone going by and someone has hurt you and you just can't heal from it. Some of us carry the chains of health problems. But did you know there's one chain that every single one of us carries? And it begins with D, and it ends in H. What is it? The chain of death. Here's a shocking statistic that I bet you've never ever thought about before. 10 out of 10 people die. Is that right? Is it wrong? It's right, isn't it? 150,000 people die every single day. And I'll tell you, I bet they all have plans for next week. Young people die as well as old. Do you know, in 2018, I was on a beach team here. We were just walking down to the beach, ready to do our, our program. And as we were walking there, a woman got hit at the top of the steady. 
Dad. Just like that. Gone. She just crossed the road and she was gone. It happened to me, guys. And here's the big question. Do you have an answer to that, Prisley? Do you have an answer when you go six feet under? Do you have an answer to your grave? Because did you know the Lord Jesus Christ said, if the Son sets you free, you shall be free indeed. There is one who came into this world, an innocent one, and he bled and died on a cross. They smashed a crown of thorns into his skull. They put nails in his hands and his feet. They spat on him. That innocent one died on a cross for your sins. You could be forgiven. Not because he did anything wrong. He died there so you could be forgiven. But here's the big news. This is what makes Jesus really special. He, was, he died, but then on the third day, he rose from the dead. And if there's anyone going by in St. Ives today who dies, flat line and then three days later you come back from the dead. Now listen very carefully to what you have to say because you're going to be someone very special but no one's done it except for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we follow him. That's why we follow him when he says I am the way, the truth and the life. No man can come to the Father except for me. Now look, I'm going to finish. I offer a little gospel to anybody who will take it from my hand. Now I've got to tell you about the newspaper called the Cornishman. Right, it's absolutely rubbish. Every page, rubbish. I've never read it, but don't ask me that. It's just rubbish. That's not fair, is it? You see, when people say Christianity is rubbish, do you, have you ever read his word? Just read it. I've come that you may have life, and life in all its fullness. This is Jesus in a graveyard. Lazarus, come out. Little girl, get up. Widow of Nahum's son. Young man, arise. Nobody can do that unless they've got eternal power. Jesus did it, and that's for you. I'm going to have a little break and hand over to my mate. Thank you to Michael. God bless you all, folks. Have a lovely time in St. Ives. If you'd like a little book, please take it from my hand. Thank you very much. Just appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Good to meet you.